welcome to the Out of Back Travel podcast. This is the podcast for advice and inspiration to you theme park attractions all around the world. My name is Stu and I'm still very sad about the ultimate. Uh, my name is Matt. I was sad about the ultimate until the ECC trip came out. Now I'm fine. Nay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm JB. Uh, equally sad about the ultimate, but hey ho, I'm on the ECC trip too. <laughs> well again this is kind of um some breaking news i guess that uh, obviously the ecc have dropped their limited edition lissaberg trip which will be happening in april just before lissaberg starts the season so it's exciting times that the it will take place before the parks even open for the season so get to stay yeah. in their brand new hotel before anyone else has be the guinea pigs in the new hotel it's exciting with some extra ride sessions at night ah <laughs> so and, many friends uh, matt have you ever been to leesburg i've never been so everything's going to be new ah, to me i've been looking forward oh. to helix for years <laughs> yeah and then um obviously you forget that leesburg also has amazing flat rides and it's probably got like about five or six flat rides that are absolutely legendary uh, particularly obviously uh, Loki, the big gyro swing. I'm looking forward to getting on that. Um, but the screaming swing that goes off over the side of the cliffs, pretty cool. Um, obviously the jukebox, classic. <laughs> <laughs> and Mechanica, think... I've never been on Mechanica. Oh, yeah. Oh, mate, my, my, my last like, long impression of Lisa Berg is um, Atmosphere. I think yeah. it was the first time I've genuinely freaked out on a tower ride. <laughs> like, and... <laughs> You were sat there next to me and just your wise words like we're not even halfway up yet it's just <laughs> <laughs> really helped really helped <laughs> yeah it's obviously the berg part of the Lisaberg name is obviously mountain and it's definitely on a mountain it's on quite a big <laughs> hill and so to put the drop tower on top of the hill is pretty uh, inspiring so you do feel like you're ridiculously high up when you when you get to the top of the atmosphere so it is a pretty intimidating drop tower it always gets me every time as well it's a, a good one so i'm looking forward to it yeah, what exciting. would you say is the best flat ride there oh um I, could, I just because it's fun i really like jukebox yeah yeah good old jukebox <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty fun um I think yeah, it's probably jukebox for me as well. I mean, atmosphere is pretty good though. It's obviously for it being so uniquely kind of positioned. So yeah, exciting times. <laughs> <laughs> mm. What would your um, theme park drag names be? I was thinking about this recently. <laughs> this wasn't on the script. <laughs> this definitely wasn't on the script. <laughs> Just throw a, throw a curveball in there. <laughs> um, I've, got, I've got two. Mine would be D Efteling or uh, Bobby Slay. Yes. <laughs> oh, I don't know. The Grand Nosh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I can't top that. <laughs> we make this podcast for you. If you have any theme park trip questions, do get involved for our socials. You can contact us on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube. Get involved, guys. Get involved. Like Brighton Peer Group, get involved in erasing roller coaster history. Sad times. Mm. <laughs> and that Bad kind of leads times. into this week's almost kind of recent news. <laughs> 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 yes. um, this week, your Harrogate reported an um, in interview with the people at Lightwater Valley to confirm that Lightwater Valley were, in fact, dismantling the ultimate, which is sad news. What do we think of this, boys? Um, I, I think it's a shame. I. Um... I read it a couple of times many years ago, um, and whilst it was rough, as like it was so unique as a ride, um, so yeah, it's pretty sad to be fair. Yeah, I have to kind of agree with those sentiments. It's it's a rough old beast, but it was kind of the last of its type in the UK, at least, like for a proper like homemade, uh, multiple partners will say uh, kind of ride is you know it offered something completely different to what's already out there. Yeah, I think that's it. It's kind of like when you see those backyard where people build roller coasters in their back garden. This was kind of the ultimate, no pun intended, example of that. <laughs> Whereas some completely mad ass <laughs> guy has built a ridiculous roller coaster in his back garden and you can uh, all go ride it. I think that's kind of what made the ultimate unique. Obviously, it was rough, but yet somehow enjoyable at the same time. It 
rode a kind of weird paradox of being completely brutal, but also completely hilarious. It just made you giggle. And I think we'll yeah. definitely see nothing like it again. Um, for me, it's the ride that got me into um, theme parks and roller coasters. I used to live near like Water Valley. I never went because I was too short. So my Yorkshire parents wouldn't take me. Because like, well, you won't get anything. It'd be a waste of money. So, <laughs> <laughs> so that was it. Seeing the ultimate um, above the trees and above the fence as we drove past. It just like, oh, wow, the ultimate's there. It's outside of the car. So we pretty much saw it every day. So it just kind of fascinated me. And that's probably why I got into looking up different roller coasters and being interested in roller coasters, the ultimate is responsible. So it's definitely sad. Obviously it's been on the cards for a while. They initially closed the ride down three years ago. Obviously they're going in a different direction. It's just disappointing that when people say it's going to be a family ride for the 12s that um, that can't include roller coasters or the rapids ride they had or Raptor Attack because I think all those attractions were suitable, not just for the 12s, but the whole family and everyone could enjoy those adventures together so that's a bit sad well just build on that point i'm not sure if you have seen that great manner of kind of done a little bit of a, a release and they're kind of <laughs> we, we won't talk about what it is because we don't know what it is no <laughs> but it's definitely interesting really with don't. it <laughs> with it kind of opening next year there's something else closer to me that's reopening next year. I don't know. I, I, I'm just being very careful here. Um, <laughs> it's interesting to see that they're labeling it as a family kind of attraction, uh, mm. as a way to kind of maybe do that USP. And I definitely feel as if I, the, if it is what we think it is, then that's definitely an interesting way to go with that. But equally, I also think it's a really good kind of step up kind of attraction. I, it's definitely going to fit quite well with what else is there. Yeah, I think they, they have announced in this uh, interview they've done with the local Birmingham newspapers that it's going to be a family thrill coaster. And that's mm -hmm. some great kind of um, terminology there. So family and thrill together, which sounds exciting. And I guess you're right, on paper, they, they need to think between Thomas Land and Accelerator to Shockwave. There's not really anything in between at the moment. I guess you do have the flat rides like four and... Um, the nebulas and stuff so this would be a good kind of addition to that there's a roller coaster stepping stone because obviously i guess really with them taking the Klondike out many years ago it was always that was the bridge but of course they upgraded that to g-force and that wasn't a oh god <laughs> it's, it's too painful to talk story. about g-force <laughs> there's a bit of a misstep bless them but again the new owners I think that obviously they've not had the park long, but they've done some great work with the Vikings area and the rebrand. It's all really, really positive. So I think it's quite exciting to think uh, what the future holds for Drayton Manor. Mm. Yeah, definitely. I think, as you say, what they've done with Vikings just looks absolutely incredible. The theme in is, is fantastic and it's definitely a step in the right direction. So I'm pretty sure it's going to be amazing whatever they put in. Yeah. So if we could obviously um, have a dream roller coaster that this would be um so obviously we're again i think they said in the the local paper so it's not really a spoiler and we know they've been doing some work in this area but essentially it's replacing apocalypse pandemonium it's going at the kind of back of the vikings area what would our dream ride be there to kind of help drayton manor's roller coaster collection <laughs> that went down well <laughs> zadra clone obviously <laughs> I was literally going to say, oh, I don't know, b and Hypercoaster, why not? <laughs> <laughs> Smash it. Uh, put G-Force think... back in. <laughs> no, uh, G-Force back in. <laughs> There's not enough paracetamol in the world. <laughs> <laughs> Let us know in the comments, guys, if you're watching this on YouTube, <laughs> put it in the comments. What would you like to see replace, um, or would you like Drayton Manor's new family for all case to be? Let us know. Comment down below. Oh, single rail, <laughs> RMC. Oh, that's a good shout. Awesome. Wow. Should we move on then? <laughs> yeah. We're just trying to stick to the script, Stu. Not talking yeah. about drag names or anything, you know. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I'm so, going to be nervous for next week now for what, what the surprise <laughs> is. <laughs> so in last week's episode, we talked all about um, how to basically book a trip to Orlando, what's the best time to book, when's the best time to go, 
Um, so Colin, this is like almost part two because we ran out of time. The episode was way too long. So, <laughs> so we've got some uh, another kind of essentially the other half of the equation, really. Um, if you're thinking about planning a trip to Orlando, what's going to cost you the same money again as actually getting there is probably the theme park tickets, if not more. And um, particularly if you're going during an event like Halloween Horror Nights, that's going to have a little extra chunk onto your kind of budget you're going to need to plan for. So um, let's talk about theme park tickets. So obviously, how much money, the question is, like, how much money should you like budget for your theme park tickets if you are going to Orlando? And it's quite a lot, actually. Um, so again, just taking some kind of estimated prices. Your Disney tickets are currently around £520. Your Universal tickets, £320. And your SeaWorld tickets are about £170. So that all added together, it's over £1,000. It's actually £1,012, um, which is obviously quite a chunk to add on to the, the kind of budget. Uh, what do you think, Jay? Is it worth it? Uh, so, as you know, like the last couple of trips, uh, we've just, we've skipped Disney. But for us, is where we're, we're thrill seekers more than anything, but we enjoy the story time, don't get me wrong. But for us, Disney just doesn't offer that competitive package where the likes of Universal, Bush, SeaWorld kind of do. So, yeah, that's, we've, stumped up for those tickets rather than going for the Disney tickets. Yeah, definitely. Obviously the same. I've done two trips to Orlando in the last um, 12 months. It's exactly the same. We didn't go to Disney on either of those trips. We just stuck with um, Universal and we bought essentially like day tickets for SeaWorld and Bush. And we did them once to try and kind of make a saving that way. And you can, those kind of tickets are out there. You don't say that much. It probably is just worth kind of going for the, the three for two um Kind of tickets that are available um yes, well, i guess we could get into that as i'm talking about it <laughs> <laughs> but the thing with the the bush tickets is the the way they price them is a little bit convoluted yeah um we were having a conversation not so long ago privately is a like, um we're looking again to book for september so we were just going to do the three for two blah 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 but then looking into it for some reason if you add the dining package on it makes it cheaper which yeah. is a bit odd, but well, um, it definitely seems to be an American offer thing. Definitely. I think since COVID, um, we've really seen a kind of price hike in, in the Bush Gardens and SeaWorld tickets. They were always around £100 for the, the free parks, and that was for the free park two-week ticket. You won't get these prices in, in America, by the way. Apologies to our American viewers and listeners. Um, these are the special prices to do for us as people that live in Europe to try and attract us across the floor, and it's a special tourist rate they do for us um do kind of feel as if we need to have like a sponsored message from surfshark vpn there <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <get> the VPN. <laughs> if anyone wants to sponsor us you know i'll take it i'll be I'll, i am your renter whore so i'll talk about anything <laughs> yeah that's the good thing about our advice we have put our our hands in our pockets and bought these with our own kind of hard-earned money it's uh it's not as if we're just kind of saying this, I'll go with this. We have actually used these services and, you know, that's the kind of hopefully I'm back being independent is it's about kind of giving you independent advice. <laughs> I don't want to say. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, C's are, are doing special. Um, so when I say C's, I mean SeaWorld Orlando, um, Aquatica and Bush Gardens Tampa. Those are the three kind of main parks they bundle in on ticket deals. They obviously also operate Adventure Island, which is a water park in Tampa. That's very rarely on a ticket um, for a European ticket. And you also do Discovery Cove in Orlando, which is the kind of um, special exclusive marine park where you get to go and snorkel with tropical fish. And obviously you can pay to swim with a dolphin that's never included in any of these tickets because obviously that's a much kind of higher pay per thing experience. In fact, actually, if you book a, a Discovery Cove package, quite often you get the free for two ticket free, um, kind of like bundled onto it. So it's a good way to do it. And those C's have started to do this pricing um, thing where they, they offer essentially it's only free visits. So you get one visit to each of the parks so one time to Bush Gardens, one time to SeaWorld, and one time to Aquatica, and you get all day dining included. And yeah, it's about £20 cheaper than buying the free for two um, ticket. So it's interesting, because um, what are your thoughts on this, Jay, from your past kind of couple of visits to the Seas Parks on food? I absolutely hate the food there. <laughs> 
but it is expensive. Mm -hmm. So to, to make a save on the entry, but also get kind of some food included, then it kind of, it balances out in a way. You know, that, that 20 pound save and definitely helps towards the toilet roll bill that you're going to be dealing with afterwards. <laughs> <laughs> Quite politely. Can you use any of them? That wasn't politely at all. <laughs> Dare I ask what happened? Oh my god, the most horrendous food poisoning. And I thought it was a one-off, but now it, it struck the second time we went in September as well. It just the food's terrible and they absolutely charge you a fortune for it. I think I think Stu mentioned it previously. Like he had to pretty much remortgage his house. I had to like sell both my kidneys, half on liver, which you know I kind of need. <laughs> and um, you know, I had to sell my services for about a month to be able to afford a chicken nugget <laughs> meal. It was just disgusting. It's it's about twenty five pound a kind of fast food meal. Um, obviously, in October I paid for my partner. It was fifty fifty quid for our kind of two what would they call quick service a fast food kind of lunch meal so to get the dining included is actually quite a saving because it could be that's 150 quid of um, well I guess that's 20, 75 quid of, of meals and um, per ticket kind of bundled in because it isn't it isn't cheap at all it's really expensive and it's the food quality is terrible <laughs> it's it's really bad I'm sure it's prisoners so are served more kind of nutritious glue <laughs> <laughs> well, that's me in crisps and chocolate bars when we go to see Will. <laughs> Norris, yeah. Do you yeah. <laughs> do a slightly different um, variation of this ticket where you get the, the free um, day's dining and then you get the unlimited visits after that. So you get free visits, including all day dining, and then the 14 days of, of using any of the parks, so you could go back and revisit. That just comes in um, just over £200. So it's like... Again, you're kind of thinking on the normal three for two ticket, you can pay an extra 30 quid to get the dining included. So it becomes really confusing. So I think what they've done, they've just made the tickets confusing. We used to have one simple option, which was here's all the parks for two weeks and, and it's it's done. And now it's like, there's always kind of confusing. That includes dining. That in, Sometimes they include the, what they call quick queue, which is that fast pass service. And sometimes you see it bundled in with quick queue as well, just to confuse it. And they... We often do free parking for the European tickets as well. So um, it's all kinds of just a bit of a, a lot of noise in that in them ticket messaging. So that's shit, isn't it? <laughs> 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 we, should you get a SeaWorld there, Jay? Absolutely. Absolutely. I, uh, we did it in January. It was great. Really enjoyed it. September, really enjoyed it. And their Howl Scream event was like, oh. it was really surprising. It was uh, thoroughly... Like, don't get me wrong, loved Halloween Horror Nights, but Howl Scream was, it was something else. It was, it was really good. Awesome. Obviously, um, SeaWorld Orlando in the past kind of couple of years has been trying to rebrand itself as the coaster capital of Orlando. So there is the focus on roller coasters because perhaps it wants to distract us from whales doing tricks. Um, <laughs> but <laughs> well, that's true. It's what we're doing. So, um, Obviously, I guess if you kind of so Matt, as someone that's never been to Orlando, I was obviously a SeaWorld on your kind of to-do list. Uh, yeah, definitely because it's you know there's some great coasters there. It, it's a long way to go and not tick off as many creds as possible. Um, <laughs> so yeah, I'd absolutely be going there. Uh, not was... not eating the food though after what no. said. <laughs> <laughs> It's a great way to lose that holiday, uh, you know, sludge. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you're going to waste at least four days of your 14-day ticket on the loo. <laughs> <laughs> you make it work. You make it work. It's fine. Oh, God. So quite often on uh, ticketing websites, you might see a deal which is free parks for the price of two. And usually it's exactly the same price as <laughs> if you bought the two parks. So you can't really save any money by thinking, do you know what? I don't need um, Volcano Bay. I'll just do Universal Studios and Islands of Adventure and buy the two park Universal ticket. Guess what? It's the same price as the free park ticket. Um, and it's the same with uh, Bush Gardens and SeaWorld or um, Aquatic or whichever combination of free parks they do will be exactly the same. It's just the same with Disney as well. Um, they'll always say, hey, 
get uh, 14 days for the price of seven it's always that price they always do um 14 for seven it's 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 kind of you'd be very unlucky to get the one kind of week that they they actually do put the price up <laughs> so yeah so you can't really compromise or cut any corners really i've seen reading i've started um getting into um like orlando forums on facebook it's a bit of a, a kind of a a wormhole to get yourself into but there's definitely um people kind of lots of people commenting like oh, i'm just going to turn up and buy a day ticket it's like don't do that because it is going to cost you the same price as the european tickets um it's not cheap to turn up and buy a day ticket and also with disney of course you can't just turn up anymore on the day you have to obviously book in advance and have a park press reservation which i think is still unbelievably catching people out even after about three years of them operating that system Okay, guys, so obviously if you're thinking about booking your theme park tickets in Orlando, it's one of those ones where you're going to have to shop around. There's no hard or fast kind of answer on who's going to be the cheapest. Most of the time, the tickets are based on the exchange rate, so you'll see some funky pricing. It'll be like uh, £318.25 because it's uh, it's based on the exchange rate to US dollars. So um, that's, that's what to look out for. Um, you can often pay a deposit and pay the remaining balance before you go, which is quite a nice way that you can spread the cost of the tickets because it is such a big expense and that might be useful to help you budget for your trip to Orlando. So attraction tickets and American attractions, you have to pay six weeks before your departure date and to add the cancellation cover with them, it's £15 per person and Florida ticks, it's you have to pay the deposit five weeks before the departure and their cancellation cover is £20 per person. So um, with the cancellation cover, you know, again, it's a bit of an upsell. They're selling you a product that doesn't really do anything other than if your plans change, you can get your money back, which obviously what was going on in the past couple of years. When it comes to travel, it's sometimes a bit better to be a bit cautious and pay that extra 15, 20 quid to give you that peace of mind. If you do have to change your plans or cancel, you're not going to be out of pocket. Just to kind of go back over old old kind of fashion times, you might see websites, advertisers, uh, you get the real tickets and you used to um, get vouchers and then you'd have to basically, when you got to Orlando, you'd have to queue at the admission windows with your voucher to swap them for real tickets, which of course took extra time. So that's when you see real tickets advertised on the attraction ticket websites. That's what they mean. It's because they're still talking to the old people that used to buy their florida ticket vouchers because again you could always pay extra to have the real ticket sent to you so um in fact a, um attraction tickets you can pay 10 pounds and they will send you a physical copy of your digital tickets but you don't need it because all the tickets these days are digital so you'll either get a qr code or a barcode and um that's your ticket so you don't have to queue at a window anymore to get a real ticket you just go up to the turnstile you scan your barcode and you're in the in the park that's it it's that simple um, obviously, you can add those barcodes to the various attraction um, apps, apart from the SeaWorld one, because they're utter shit. But um, <laughs> the, you're going to have to take your paper to SeaWorld and scan your bit of paper, I'm afraid. But um, Universal and Disney, you can put your tickets into that app to keep them nice and safe. And again, we recommend taking a screenshot of your um, QR code of your ticket, just in case. Like one day when we were at Universal, Jay, in January, the internet went down. Oh, my God. There was no internet <laughs> in the whole of Orlando. Uh, but luckily, because we had a screenshot of the ticket, we could still scan it to get into the park. So Going back to part one of this, that's why it's so important to have like a good power bank with you because so much goes through your phone now. Um, from ticketing to things that we've spoken about, but also if you're new to the parks, it's like the apps are actually pretty solid and they'll give you good directions to get to places as well. Um, but yeah, obviously, you, you need like power and stuff to do that. Yeah, sorry to interrupt. That was a good point, though, because you don't get a park map anymore. Obviously, the park map is now inside the app. So if you want to know how to get around the park, you're going to have to use your phone and, and navigate in your app. I miss having a park map. Yeah, me too. The other thing with the American Orlando attraction tickets is you're going to see combination deals that claim to be these amazing money-saving things. And actually the reality is they save you about 10 quid. So, <laughs> so, <laughs> I mean, a savings are saving, especially for a family. Obviously it can add up quick, pretty quickly, not to be dismissive of it, but um, again, it's they're marketed to be these amazing kind of one solution, but in reality, they're gonna send you the actual components. So if you bought a 
ultimate ticket that had Disney Universal and SeaWorld included, it's not going to be in one ticket. The reality is they're going to send you a Disney ticket, a Universal ticket and a SeaWorld ticket. So you're going to get all those free parts. They just, they obviously bundle them together to do a little bit of a saving. So um, obviously we've talked already to buy these tickets separately. It's just over a thousand pounds. Um, attraction tickets have the Orlando Freedom ticket, which is Disney, Universal and Seas. So, and they are selling that for £999. So that's a saving of £13. So it's, uh, <laughs> it's not that's half a SeaWorld meal. Yeah. <laughs> it is. It's, it's a fat Tuesdays. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, definitely. So it, again, like not to kind of, all the savings because it is good for the savings but it's not it's not going to suddenly help with your holiday budgeting you're still going to have to pay that amount i'm afraid the best deal at the moment is actually the most expensive site for theme park tickets which is kind of crazy to get your head around that one but florida ticks these are these guys are quite pricey when it comes to tickets um they are doing their florida ultimate florida combo offer 2013 again they've got lots of different confusing versions of this one of them actually comes with the SeaWorld free visit, free all day dining offer. So you, again, look at kind of what tickets are actually in the in the um, components because that's some way they can make these savings. So offer you that that amazing price. It might be because it's a, a lesser ticket that's going into the combination. Um, but this one is all the all singing or dancing tickets, and it comes out at one thousand and thirty seven pounds, which obviously is more than uh, than buying them separately. But they have a discount code. If you put the promo code in, which was sort of like Jan 23, it gives you 7% off, which then makes the ticket £964. So it's the cheapest. So the, that's, uh, that's the cheapest ticket available at the moment. Um, back in October when I went, um, they, they had a 5% um, saving code on. So I bought my universal tickets for these guys. So it worked out a little bit cheaper. It was just under £300 to get the tickets from them. So really, really good to kind of shop around and get the best offer we asked you guys obviously once you've got your theme park tickets you want to head to the theme parks it's exciting so what's the first ride you head to when you arrive in orlando we asked our followers on instagram let's um, see what they said so zach said rip ride rocket oh why'd you go there first because <laughs> he's a glutton for punishment yeah definitely I, I wasn't, my legs weren't compressed enough on an international flight. So that's, <laughs> <laughs> let's go on the Mara with the vertical. Why not? <laughs> so, yeah, well, it's an, it's an okay ride. It's fun, especially at night. It's when it has a disco light mode on. It's a pretty fun ride. Um, it's yeah. actually really surprisingly intense. I think I always forget that. Every time I go on it, even though I sell the time, it's surprisingly intense. I'm always surprised by its intensity when I go on Red Rocket. So it's a, it's a funky ride. And it's a long ride. It goes on forever. Yeah. And next up, we've got IMV underscore Pete, which said dinosaur at Animal Kingdom. Oh, that's a good shout. Again, a very obscure ride to pick. You wouldn't go to Expedition Everest. <laughs> <But>. <laughs> when you go into Animal Kingdom. But yeah, again, great ride. Um, obviously, the simple things, isn't it? Just big animatronic dinosaurs coming at you in the dark. Always going to be fun. So Matt, what's your first uh, ride in Orlando? Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, if I could only choose one, then I'd have to get back on the plane. It would, <laughs> it, <laughs> you know, things are really tough. Um, Oh, oh, I don't know. We just told like, you, Matt, that there's no, there's no money saving to that. You have to commit to the two weeks of tickets. Okay. If, <laughs> if, if I know nothing for part one. <laughs> if I know the two weeks, probably Everest. Everest. Oh, okay. Because it, it's like bucket list. I've got to do it forever. Um, oh. But, but if you know, I'm going on one ride and then I get the food poisoning and that's it. Waste of a ticket. <laughs> I, I'm quasi go home. <laughs> Yeah, good shout. <laughs> good shout. Fair play. What do you think of those choices at home? Do let us know in the comments. Drop your kind of what ride you would go to first in the comments. Doesn't make any sense. I can't do YouTube talk. <laughs> and I'd pick White Lightning because oh, I'm sorry, doing last. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so sorry. I forgot you were here. 
I forgot I was here too. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so this week's trip at us, Skip It. <laughs> we're looking at endless summer surfside with our good friends of British Airways, as we discussed in last week's show. If you're looking to some, uh, the, if you're looking oh. to, <laughs> the, 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 the. <laughs> this is a disaster. <laughs> this is the worst show ever. <laughs> So this week, guys, we are tripping or skipping Universal's Endless Summer Surfside Inn and Suites with our good friend British. British <laughs> We're so post. Oh. <laughs> okay, guys. So this week's trip or skip it is with our good friends British Airways. We learned last week about how to find the best price for Orlando using their holiday finder tool. And this trip comes from that tool. So it's a nice, easy one for me. I had to do no work at all. <laughs> this is for two people sharing. It's going out on the 27th of January, 2023, and returning on the 3rd of February, so just a week. And it's, it's coming out. The package um, comes out at £685. The tickets for Universal are £319. And the ticket to SeaWorld and Bush Gardens is £172. And that all together comes out at £1,176. So a week in Orlando, staying at Universal in the, one of their on-site hotels, which of course gets you some lovely benefits. And the tickets to Bush Gardens, SeaWorld Aquatica, Universal Studios, Islands of Adventure and Volcano Bay. What do you reckon, guys? Trip it or skip it? Uh, J- Jay's got more experience than me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what with? Uh... <laughs> Um, <laughs> sorry, I'm just going over the numbers in my head. I, I, I'm one one seven six. I'm 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 a universal. It's in the script. I don't, I don't know, it's in a it's in a chart. Well, we've gone that far off the script, Stu. <laughs> <laughs> I'm 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 probably gonna say trip it. Let's face it. My <laughs> my credit card's just getting bashed in with universal at the moment. Um, I, I would trip it based on what I know pricing wise of, of um, Orlando trips and what you're getting there. It sounds like a very good deal. Um, and yeah, I think you could easily fill a week with everything you've got there. Yeah, absolutely. Obviously, it's trip it for me as well. <laughs> okay, uh, Jay, you've been to visit um, some friends that were staying at Endless Summer Surfside, and you're actually staying at Endless Summer Surfside yourself in September. Uh, what you yes, I am. Um, unfortunately, I didn't go in the hotel. I was trying oh. to escape back onto International Drive as quick <laughs> as I could. Um, but that lovely little gate was locked, um, oh, so that no. was fun. Um, I am looking forward to staying there. It's It was, as we mentioned in part one, it was more of the value proposition of us having more time for Halloween yeah. Horror Nights in Florida that made us choose Endless Summer. But from everything that I've seen so far, and obviously I've got friends who've stayed there, they've always kind of complimented it on it. Yeah, it being a value proposition, but it doesn't feel like a value proposition. It's still got that like kind of edge of it is a universal hotel. There is that kind of little level up of, of class compared to like your Armada Inn or wherever. Yeah, definitely. I think the nice thing about it is it's not easy because you have to walk quite a long way around the, the board of the property because the entrances are not on International Drive. They're faced onto Universal Boulevard for obvious reasons. But um, you can walk around the corner about five minutes to get onto International Drive. And there you've got a Walgreens across the road. I think there's a 7-Eleven on the other side of the road as well. And obviously all the restaurants in International Drive. So the great thing about and the summer, um, both the end and summer resorts, is they are actually quite accessible to civilization. So you're not trapped in that universal bubble of having to obviously spend a lot of money on food and drink. You can get the essentials from normal kind of price stores, I guess. Absolutely. Like, it's great that we're going to have those choices on our doorstep. And if we fancy a midnight game of golf with a load of crocodiles, that's also right there <laughs> on the doorstep. It is, yeah, it's across the road. <laughs> <laughs> And uh, how far is he is? <laughs> Not that far. <laughs> <laughs> so quite often, Orlando, it's quite common for hotels to change name and change brand, especially 
uh, the hotels in Kissimmee and Sashwa Drive are always changing kind of owners and being rebranded. Often it's because they've been decommissioned because they haven't up been upgraded to meet the standards of that brand, but there we go. So um, quite recently, uh, Crown Plaza Universal and Universal Boulevard is currently being changed over to Hotel Kinetic. One of these most kind of famous examples of this was the Howard Johnson Inn on International Drive. A couple of years back, it was actually bought by a gay club and it was converted into a, a gay club and interesting concept hotel. This is the M Hotel on I Drive. Um, it's actually been demolished because it was so terrible. <laughs> it just didn't survive. <laughs> is this the one that like, you tried to book us into when, like, <laughs> many moons ago? You're like, this sounds cool. <laughs> Absolutely not, because mm. they took the walls down around the bathroom. <laughs> So they took the bathroom all down in the in your hotel room and just replaced it with a shower curtain. Absolutely <laughs> not. <laughs> I need walls. <laughs> I need to be there. <laughs> so you can't hear my tears. <laughs> Imagine the people's surprise when they thought they would book the Howard Johnson in and they um, got a very experimental hotel on top of a gay bar. <laughs> and they if they're the the Johnson Inn kind of sounds like the right kind of name for a gay bar or hotel. <laughs> <laughs> yes, and obviously no disrespect to uh, gay venues, obviously myself and Jay, prominent members of the LGBTQ plus community. And Matt, of course, is legendary friend of the gays. Um, so... <laughs> <laughs> um, so... So, but obviously it's quite a shock because they did some really strange things. Like I said, they took the walls down around the bathroom. They um, spray painted the furniture to decorate it. So yes, it caused some upset. So that is our, our, I've been back through the reviews for this week's angry comments and to see the reviews of the M Hotel. Um, any ideas for what we could call this? The Grand Nosh. Well, that's yes. what... <laughs> the Grand Nosh I Drive. <laughs> uh, I can see Howard Johnson through the curtain. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah, let's go with that. <laughs> Don't do it. Dirty, no door or wall to toilet or shower. Shower did not work. Under construction and new management. Pool and area were filthy. I was there for approximately 12 hours instead of five nights. Terrible, rude, horrible service. Suck. The front desk is rude and impolite. I prefer to sleep in a tent rather than sleep on their bed. We had four roaches sharing the room with us. The room only had a shower curtain separating the bathroom from the room. Four cockroaches were in the room. The whole place was dirty. Just a complete terrible experience. I'd rather sleep in the back seat of my car than ever stay in this dump again. Experience you won't forget. Like every other review, I'm certain this place is a dump and the advertised price is a scam. I suggest staying here for the story time experience of having stayed in one of the worst hotels ever. Would not recommend. We stayed here because it was the cheapest. You get what you pay for. A little mold in the bathroom and we were lucky by all accounts that we had a door. Outdated and shabby. If this is a renovation and this place really needs help, they spray painted right over the furniture. It looks utterly tacky. Great location, but needs a lot of housekeeping help. The rooms were nasty and there was glass in the tub. Glad I noticed before I put my baby in. Again, everything I say is true based on my personal experience. Stay the fuck away. Are you serious? I try to think positive on every review, but this time, I just can't. I found nothing positive to report here. Awesome. Thanks, boys. That was a, a journey, wasn't it? Hi. It's been emotional. It? <laughs> Many a blooper. <laughs> okay, oh. I should probably end it. I need to end it. What do I say? Thank you very much for listening, guys. <laughs> and until next time, stay safe on the way I'm back. <laughs> We're done. Good night. <laughs> when you said, right, I've got to end it, I was going, don't be so dramatic, Stuart, with the good show. <laughs> it's, it's been a tough one to get through. <laughs> okay, guys. Thanks for having the blooper reel from this. <laughs>